Hey everyone, and welcome to the mid-season one edition of our best PvP melee in Shadowlands tier list. We're now a couple of months into the first season of Shadowlands, and most top players are just about done gearing up, which means that we've now got enough data to see what Arena looks like with full gear. And with this year's AWC well underway, we've also got a tournament level meta to look at and identify which classes and comps are seeing success at the very highest level. So if you're interested in learning about which specs are performing the best to figure out what melee you should be trying to gear up to enjoy in the second half of this PvP season, then this video is just what you've been looking for. Also, if you do enjoy this video, we're closing in on 100,000 subs and would love your support to help us reach this milestone. For now though, sit back, relax, and enjoy this one as we catch you up to where each melee has ended up thanks to a combination of PvP tuning, gearing up, and meta development. First, we have our unranked tier where Fury Warriors have resided since the release of Shadowlands. Despite a 3% buff to all Fury damage on February 1st, Fury remains as one of the most underrepresented melee DPS specs in Raided Arena. This primarily comes down to the fact that Fury's toolkit lacks a ton of utility when compared to Arms Warriors. Not only do they lack the Mortal Strike effect, which most melee comps heavily rely on for their pressure in the windows without CC, Fury just doesn't bring much defensive utility to the table either. While their Arms counterparts are capable of carrying the game, Fury remains a damage bot that doesn't quite pack the punch that it needs to in order to become a relevant spec at the high end of Arena. The last time we saw Fury being played at a high level was briefly back in BFA when their damage output was incredibly high, allowing them to succeed in high pressure melee cleaves while relying on the old PvP talent Thirst for Battle to essentially keep them free of snares all the time. Without the ability to one-shot people with huge burst damage while being somewhat unkiteable, Fury just doesn't have what it needs to be considered a relevant spec. Next, we've got Outlaw Rogues who, just like Fury, remain in our unranked tier. And once again, much like Fury, the last time that we saw Outlaw on top was in a previous expansion. Not only do they lack the damage that they need to frequently set up strong kill attempts, but the loss of a ranged stun in Shadowlands and the lack of frequent access to cross CC, like a sub rogue, just means that Outlaw Rogue doesn't have the capabilities to control the game that it once had. In addition, while both Assassination and Sub Rogues do not solely rely on physical damage, Outlaw Rogues do. This results in them struggling to make a dent in high armored targets such as Warriors and Paladins, both of which are super common right now on the ladder. So, with all of these facts considered, you end up with a spec that just isn't too threatening and lacks in comparison to the other specs Rogues can play, resulting in top Rogues having no reason to even consider this spec. Alright, moving on, we've got the first change to our melee tier list, with Unholy DKs now being placed in the C tier, despite the recent buffs to Necrotic Strike and Virulent Plague, which gave players a reason to pick Unholy in the most recent AWC tournament. The damage output of Unholy just remains far too low for it to be considered a top spec, although their control remains just as strong as it was in BFA when Unholy was considered a top spec. The lack of pressure that Necrotic Strike deals means that there's no reason to ever play Unholy over Frost. And when you look at how much weaker Death Strike is in Shadowlands, you end up with a spec that doesn't come close to matching the pressure it had in previous expansions, while also lacking the durability it once had. Still though, Unholy does have access to a handful of utility that can give it some decent matchups, specifically into casters with Rune of Spell Warding and the Death's Embrace Legendary. Although this just means that, while Unholy might have a place in a tournament meta, it simply does not have enough strengths to warrant a place at the top of our tier list for ladder play. Alright, next up we've got our B tier, which starts with another change from the last edition of our tier list, with Assassination Rogue moving up from our unranked tier. This all comes down to a 5% damage buff they received on February 1st, in addition to another 5% damage buff they received all the way back on December 11th. As a lot of you might have guessed by now, given our explanations for why a few other specs are ranked so low, damage in World of Warcraft PvP truly is king. If your numbers are high, your class is good, and these buffs to Assassination Rogues definitely brought the spec forward into relevancy. However, even though players now have a reason to play Assassination, specifically into high armor targets, the spec continues to struggle with the issues that have plagued it throughout this expansion. Coming from BFA, where players had huge levels of haste, they lost that ability to pump out incredible sustained single target pressure given how low haste is right now. It was this overwhelming amount of pressure that Assassination was able to output that made it such a strong spec in previous expansions. 
but with that niche out the window, you end up with a spec that's essentially just a weaker version of a warrior. All you can really do is just run at a guy and deal some damage while lacking all the defensive utility that an arms warrior has and the cross CC potential that sub has. So despite these damage buffs being great for spread pressure, the single target pressure still isn't comparable to what it was in BFA. The only other spec in our B tier is one that hasn't moved since our last melee tier list, and that's Havoc DH. And again, we have a spec that's a shadow of what it was in BFA. The loss of a dodge effect on Blade Dance and the nerf to Blur and a lack of high self-healing has made the spec incredibly frail. Even though Demon Hunters held onto a ton of their utility and CC and even gained a second darkness through their legendary of choice, the fact that they're so easy to kill means the spec remains stuck in our B tier. The only saving grace of Demon Hunters is the ridiculous strength of their Covenant of Choice ability, the Hunt. With this, Demon Hunters are capable of quickly ending games with an insanely hard-hitting ability, and we've seen top Demon Hunters adopt the strategy of faking their Hunt cast to bait people into trading defensives for no reason, before eventually one-shotting them with the ability. But despite the strength of the Hunt, their frailty prevents them from being considered a top pick. Now, before we get into our A and S tier, I quickly want to let you all know where you can find the best place to improve at Arena if you actually want to rank up and get better on any of the melee we're talking about in this video. Skillcap started our mission 10 years ago in World of Warcraft to deliver the best information directly from the best players on Earth. From way back then to this current day, we still only work with the very best players. All that's changed is our guides have gotten better and now have a new home on our brand new website we launched just for Shadowlands. We have hundreds of guides packaged into refined courses that will rapidly improve your skills in Arena as we simplify the very best strategies the pros are using in the evolving meta. The best part? You don't have to take our word for it. We have an improvement guarantee of at least 250 rating when actively using Skillcap. Otherwise, you can claim a full refund. Check us out right after this. Next up though, we're going to be taking a look at our A tier, starting with Subtlety Rogues which have moved down from our S tier. While the spec itself is still able to remain at the top of the European and NA ladders, with players like Waz and Nick playing Rogue Mage at an incredible level, the class itself simply asks too much from players to be able to perform at such a high level consistently. The lack of sustained damage and frailty of the spec forces it into a hit and run playstyle that is easily dealt with by a number of strong specs the hardest of which is Arms Warriors. And given the immense popularity of Arms right now, it's no surprise that sub rogues are currently struggling to consistently do well on the ladder, given that they're essentially queuing into a soft counter almost every other game. But despite sub rogues struggling into Arms, they're still able to deal huge bursts with their offensive cooldowns and offer a level of control that no other class brings. Pair that up with a Fire Mage, and you have a devastating combo that allows the best players to remain at the top of the ladder. The main concern here is that lower rated players just can't perform at the level required to make sub rogues a formidable spec across the ladder, leaving just a handful of players seeing success with it. So, while we would consider ranking sub as an S tier spec if we were only looking at the 99th percentile of players, we're instead looking at the population as a whole and have to rank sub lower. Next up, we have Feral Druids who will remain in our A tier. The spec itself is incredibly strong, given that it deals a ton of damage while being super durable thanks to having a great defensive toolkit, which includes a number of ways to access Frenzied Regeneration. Something else that is often overlooked is that Ferals actually have some of the best off healing in the game, even rivaling or outdoing both Ret and Enhance off healing at times. But despite all these strengths, Feral Druids lack the same one-shot capabilities as the upcoming S-tier melee, which prevents it from solo carrying wins. Also, Feral's comp options are quite limited, as they are required to play with classes that have consistent CC for healers, and only mages and hunters fall into this category, although other comps with a Mortal Strike effect can also be played to some success, such as with an Arms Warrior. Sadly though, if Ferals choose to play without these select classes, they'll be stuck in a composition that lacks a few important tools needed to win the game. And so, despite being very strong themselves, they just miss out on our S tier. And next up, we have a common partner of Feral, and that's Survival Hunters. Honestly, Survival is a great spec. It deals a ton of sustained damage and has decent burst if they choose to use the latent Poison Injectors Legendary, which makes Raptor Strike hit really hard. They've also got Roar of Sacrifice, which helps to counter Combustion, which is one of the strongest offensives in the game right now. In addition, the rest of their defensive toolkit isn't half bad. 
with access to a self heal and immunity and a 15 second feign death CD if they use the Craven Stratagem Legendary, which helps a ton in surviving, especially against casters when paired with the Survival Tactics PvP talent. But despite how stacked their toolkit is as a whole, they suffer from the same issue that prevents Feral from being an S tier spec given that their composition options are quite limited. We generally see Survival paired up with either a Feral Druid or a Rep Paladin, both of which have great off healing, which Hunters depend on in longer drawn out games, given that the CD of their only major defensive cooldown, Aspect of the Turtle, is extremely long. Without off healing, Hunters generally struggle to outlast their opponents as they can quickly run out of defensive cooldowns, especially against melee that can train them. And much like Ferals, they also lack the killer burst that's kind of needed to be considered in S tier spec. They do obviously have the previously mentioned Latent Poison Injectors Legendary, which does give them a decent amount of burst, but it comes at the cost of playing without the Craven Stratagem Legendary, which definitely hurts their durability significantly. So, all things considered, we're left with a spec that's all things considered balanced quite well, given that it has a multitude of strengths, but it just doesn't quite have enough to warrant a spot in our S tier. Alright, the last spec in our A tier is going to be Frost DKs which have moved up from last time. While Frost did receive an overall damage buff on February 1st, we believe the spec should have already been ranked higher in our last list. The lack of top players spending much time on Frost near the start of the season led the spec to be largely slept on. But since seeing top DKs like Mez compete at the top of the ladder, we've seen more and more Frost DKs pop up in both the European and NA ladders, with players starting to realize just how strong this spec really is. And although their damage is decent with their chill streak setups being as threatening as ever, it's not the damage that makes them an A tier spec. Instead, it's the PvP talent Heart Stop Aura. This alone makes Frost DKs very difficult to play against, as it increases the cooldown of all enemy abilities within 8 yards which effectively lowers the amount of damage the enemy team will do, almost working as a pseudo-defensive cooldown by slowing down the pace of the game and causing enemy teams to deal less damage to the Frost DK's team. They're also able to combine this with the PvP talent Delirium to make training mages a very viable strategy, preventing the frequent access to their blink or shimmer cooldown. Frost DKs are also able to do something in Shadowlands that they couldn't do before, which is set up a chill streak go without the assistance from their partners. In previous expansions, they largely rely on a monk to leg sweep after the Frost DK used Grip and Blinding Sleep. Now though, the Frost DK can Death Grip into a Frostworm's Fury which stuns all enemies in its path when used with the legendary of choice, Absolute Zero. They can also pair this up with their Necrolore Covenant ability Abomination Limb to set up entire kill attempts on their own. This change alone means that Frost DKs are no longer forced to play with a Windwalker Monk and can instead play with other specs most important of which is an arms warrior. So, all things considered, Frost DKs are more durable and have access to better kill attempts than Unholy, which puts them comfortably into our A tier. Next, we've got what you've all been waiting for, our S tier, although we doubt the specs in this tier are going to surprise any of you. The first spec that we'll be looking at is Arms Warrior, which has been considered one, if not the best melee in Shadowlands since the beta. The arms toolkit remains as strong today as it was since the season began with Intervene standing out as one of the strongest defensive abilities in the game. With Intervene alone, Warriors are able to keep their teammates alive against melee damage through pretty much any amount of damage. A common strategy that we've seen Warriors employ throughout this season is to combine Intervene with Die by the Sword, which has seen its cooldown significantly reduced since BFA, going down to 2 minutes as its baseline, while being reduced even further by the Stalwart Guardian Conduit. In addition to Intervene, Warriors also have a ton of other defensive tools to keep their team alive and out of CC, including the Misshapen Mirror, Legendary, and Overwatch PvP talent. But their strengths don't end there, as the recent surge of Venthyr Warriors running around in full gear has seen them capable of dealing insane damage due to the power of Condemn. Arms also surprisingly saw a 3% damage buff on February 1st, made their already high damage output even harder to deal with for enemy teams. And despite the fact that that buff was paired with a nerf to the Master and Commander PvP talent, ARMS remains an absolute beast of a spec, capable of solo carrying the game with their insane defensive toolkit and insane damage. Altogether, this leaves ARMS in the perfect position to be one of the best melee throughout the rest of the season, and even the expansion if their toolkit remains the same, as even a few damage nerfs will still see the specs stay on top as their defensive utility is unmatched by any other melee. Moving on, Windwalker Monks also remain in our S tier. 
While many players complain that Windwalker is a bit frail, this is usually the case when the spec is being played by more inexperienced players at lower ratings. In the hands of an experienced monk, the spec is one of the most elusive given how powerful their mobility is. Players who read the game and correctly utilize their mobility are capable of pre-porting and rolling away from enemy setups as they happen, while also making good use of their Touch of Karma, Diffuse Magic or Dampen Harm, and Fortifying Brew to stay in and tank damage when needed. The spec also pairs very well with Holy Paladins, which are currently the best healer, given how Ultimate Sacrifice is the perfect cooldown to rotate in between the Windwalker Monk's own short CD defensives. And while this helps to explain why Windwalker Monks can be difficult to kill when piloted by a top player, it's their offensive capabilities that make them such a threat in high-rated arena. The combination of Weapons of Order and Invoke Zuen gives Windwalkers a very lengthy window with their damage output in unbelievably high states, and it becomes very difficult for enemy teams to deal with, given that these offensive CDs last up to 30 seconds. Pairing this with access to Paralysis and Leg Sweep means that Windwalkers are capable of solo carrying the game with huge damage and reliable CC, cementing their place in our S tier. Next, we've got a spec that definitely won't surprise anyone, given how strong it is, especially at lower ratings. So far this expansion, Rep Paladins have been enjoying a time in the spotlight at the top of our tier list, something that hasn't happened for quite some time. We're even seeing Rep Paladins consistently show up in the AWC tournaments, further reinforcing the idea that the spec is not just a noob stomper right now. So, what makes Rhett so strong? Well, despite the recent 20% nerf to their Word of Glory, they remain a strong support spec with excellent off-healing, especially during their Avenging Wrath. In addition to the much complained about off-healing, Rhett Burst can even be somewhat compared to a Fire Mage's Combustion, as the power of Divine Toll, when paired up with the Ringing Clarity Conduit, gives Rhett's a chance to single-handedly win games for their teams in the blink of an eye. And even if their Ringing Clarity doesn't proc a bunch of judgments that crit, Mastery boost provided by the Soulbind Pelagos in conjunction with hard hitting Templar's Verdicts means that Rets can still take out their opponents without even having to rely on that RNG. Take all of this and pair it with the defensive capabilities of an Arms Warrior, and you end up with a comp that's capable of taking the ladder by storm, with Ret Warrior being one of the best comps in the game right now. And even without pairing Rets with a Warrior, the spec itself has such a strong burst window that it can win games even when it's in a less durable comp. All right, the final spec that we're going to look at might be a little more surprising to see in our S tier, but make no mistake, Enhancement Shamans are hands down one of the best melee right now, even winning the most recent AWC tournament with the incredibly powerful Turbo Cleave Comp. Much like the way Rep Paladins benefit from being paired up with an Arms Warrior, Enhanced Shamans also gain a lot from an Arms Warrior's defensive toolkit, which allows the strengths of an Enhanced Shaman to shine through. First, we have their off healing, which, although it is limited by mana, it can pretty much top themselves and their teammates through any amount of damage at any point in the game. They've also got great utility for keeping their healer out of crowd control in the form of wind shear and grounding totem. And don't get us started on their offensive cooldowns, as the combination of Ascendance, Bloodlust, and Doom Winds can pretty much see an enhanced global someone, especially when combined with their Venthyr Covenant ability, Chain Harvest, which also tops their team if they're low. They also received a 3% damage buff on February 1st, which made their already potent sustain and burst damage even harder to deal with. So yeah, a support melee that can one-shot. It's no surprise that Enhance rounds out our S tier. All right, everyone, that about does it for our mid-season one melee tier list update. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified the moment we release more of our tier list updates and other awesome Shadowlands content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.